math subtest as part of the Harvard Square MTOL math workshop series. Let's take a look at the problem. First, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, take a glance at it before I even read it. What do I see? Well, I see decimals, and I see a number line. I see a value on that number line. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking P is going to be some decimal in between those two values. All right, and I also see some more. Uh, I see some more decimals in the answer choices. So I'm thinking it's going to want me to figure out what P is, and since these two start, the, the starting point is in a decimal, and this is a decimal, P is going to be some value in between these two decimals. Okay, that's just quick glance type of stuff. Now I'm going to read the problem and see see what it says. What number is represented by P point P on the number line above? Okay, guess what? It wants me to figure out what P is. It wants me to figure out what the number is or the decimal is that's represented by it. So by taking that quick glance and by reading the question, I, I sort of that quick glance gives me some big information. I get the big picture. I can make some idea, I can set myself up for what to look for in the question. Now this is a very easy question to uh, break down. It's pretty straightforward. But if this was a more complex question, that information that I'm gleaming at my first glance could really help me cut through it. But, you know, it's kind of straightforward. So, so do both of them, but practice the strategy. But you know that, you know, in this case right here, you really just need to read that question. But anyways, let's get started. In a problem like this, with these values as starting points and end points, I don't know about you, but I'm not typically being like, okay, I have 300 thousandths and I have 400 thousandths. I'm looking for an answer somewhere in between. So I'm going to make a deal with myself. I call it, in the workshops, I call it the pinky swear. Here's the pinky swear. I'm going to say this is 3 and this is 4. Now the deal I made with myself, I'm making with you, is that to make that deal, I move the decimal over to the right three spaces. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's how I got three and four. So my answer, at the end of the day, whatever my answer is, I gotta remember to move that decimal over to the left. One, two, three spaces. So no matter what I get, you gotta, re you gotta remind me to turn my to remember that pinky square and bring that number back. Okay, so here I have this. I'm starting at three. I'm going to four, and I'm trying to find out what p is. Well, from three to four is one one unit. How many spaces in between three and four? This is where you you very carefully put your pencil on the computer screen, or you very carefully count it, starting at the three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight spaces. So each one of these spaces, since there's eight parts to one whole, each one of them could be thought of as one-eighth, right? So I'm going one-eighth plus another eighth, and that gets me to my p-value. So I have three plus one-eighth plus one-eighth. Well, isn't that the same as three plus two-eighths? You know what you're saying? You're saying two-eighths, I can reduce that to one of my core fractions, one-fourth. So it's really 3 plus 1 fourth. And what I know, because 1 fourth is one of my core fractions, just like you know that 1 fourth by heart, you've memorized that 1 fourth is equal to 0 0.25. You already know that 3 plus 1 fourth is equal to 3.25. So here, let's just write that in our answer choice. P is equal to 3.25. Am I done? Is this the answer? 3.25? And you're saying, no, no. Chris, you got to remember to bring the decimal back three spaces to the left. So I actually get an answer of 0 0.00325. Thank you, team, for helping me solve this problem. And I hope you found this helpful um, in thinking about not only how to solve it, but strategies to deal with uh, problems that involve number lines, problems that you know start you off with you know sort of sticky decimals. And also um, thinking about this in terms of, you know, what the part to whole relationship is. So I understand that there's eight parts to this uh, between the three and the four and that this is one eighth. Eventually I want you to go back and review your core fractions one half, one third, one fourth, you know, uh, one fifth, one eighth, 
even uh, even one tenth. And uh, you should know these. Definitely, you want to know your core fractions cold. This is sort of like your bread and butter of fractions, decimals, and percents. So you should know that one half is equal to 0 0.5, which is equal to 50 percent. You know, you should know that one third is equal to 0 0.33. We talked about this earlier, and that's equal to what? Um, you could say 33 percent, just round it. One fourth, 0 0.25, or 25 percent. One uh, one fifth, 0 0.2. We did this earlier, or you know, 20 percent, and then so on and so on. And uh, this is one eighth. I want you to know, and one tenth. You know, that's your 12.5 percent. And this is your, you know, 10%. Know these cold. Keep on sending your questions. Keep on working on this. Check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops coming up. You can go to gomath.com or you could look, go to the website and find out more information about one-to-one -one tutoring if you need help on one-to-one -one tutoring for the math MTELs. doesn't matter if it's the general curriculum or the 51, the 53, the 47, the 09. Um, all these ideas are connected. They're all using math. So you got to know all the concepts to have success on this, especially the more advanced ones. You got to know a little bit more. All right, team. Hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.